The question that I have is, could you discuss how to handle the consolidation due to water table drop? The final topic that I want to discuss here um, is the settlement due to fluctuations in the groundwater table. Supposing, say, we have a soil profile that looks like that. There is a layer of clay sandwich between two sand layers. Water table is right here, two meters below the ground level. And let's just say, due to capillary action, even this part of the soil is saturated. The saturated density of the whole sand layer, top to bottom, is 20 kilonewton per meter cubed, and the saturated density of the clay layer is 19 kilonewton per meter cubed. Supposing, say, we go ahead and calculate the initial vertical stress at point A, and I get a value of 208.2 kilopascal for, for that, which is the initial effective vertical stress at point A. Now let's just say that the water table has dropped by 10 meters. So now the water table is right here. And let's assume again, due to capillary action, the total density uh, of this sand layer remains the same, 20 kilonewton per meter cubed. Now let's go ahead and calculate the uh, vertical effective stress at the midpoint of the clay layer. The effective stress at the midpoint A works out to be 306.3 kilopascal, and then the difference between the two, in other words, the difference between this value and this value is 98.1 kilopascal. So in other words, the water table drop is supposed to cause a, an increase in the vertical effective stress at point A. But this is obviously not going to happen immediately, overnight. This is a consolidation process. So the vertical effective stress at A has been increased by the water table drop, but that's going to now initiate a consolidation process in the clay layer. And whatever the time that it'll take for the primary consolidation to, to be over is how long it's going to take for the effective stress to increase uh, at that point by this much. So why did this happen? Well, this happens because that while the total stress at point A uh, remaining the same, the pore pressure drops from 166.8 to 68.67. The difference, ob obviously, is the difference in the pore, pore water pressure corresponding to 10 meter drop of water table. We can kind of generalize it as follows. So increase in the effective stress at point A can be written as the effective stress after minus the effective stress before. The effective stress after is the total power, I mean the total um, um, vertical stress minus the pore pressure at point A. Um, and similarly, um, the effective stress before is the total vertical stress minus the pore pressure at point, point A before, but the total vertical stress remains the same because the density of the material uh, um, above the clay layer uh, remains uh, saturated due to capillary action, and therefore the total vertical stress does not change, so you can cancel these two, and the equation simplifies to the differences in the pore water pressure. The differences in the pore water pressures equals to uh, delta H multiplied by gamma W, where delta H is the drop in the water table. Now you can think of this as an increase in the vertical stress at point A uh, caused by the water table, and that is going to trigger uh, primary consolidation at point A, and you can follow the same procedures that we have learned um, in, in this section in order to calculate various quantities of interest, like for example, what is the settlement two years after the, um, the drop in the water table, you know, things like that. Typically, of course, uh, while the water table is dropping, consolidation will initiate. Uh, typically, the drop in water table is not going to take place overnight, and that itself might take, take uh, 
you know, maybe a year or something like that. And then during that part, um, the consolidation had already begun. <clears throat> so there are two time-dependent processes that are running parallel to each other, which is um, the increase in the vertical stress and the consolidation. So you have to consider both of these simultaneously uh, in order to evaluate the consolidation um, or consolidation settlement at any given point uh, more accurately. So this is kind of beyond the scope of this uh, course, and I'm not going to get into that here. Say these are the properties of the clay layer. Coefficient of volume change is 0 0.001 per kilopascal, and the coefficient of consolidation is 5 times 10 to the minus 4 centimeters squared per second. We want to calculate the ultimate settlement of the ground surface due to the drop in water table by 10 meters and the time that it would take for 50% of the consolidation to take place, little t50. Since m sub v is given, we will use this formula for calculating the ultimate settlement. In this formula, the change in the vertical stress equals the change in the pore water pressure due to the water table drop, which is 9.81 multiplied by 10. 9.81 obviously is the unit weight of water. 10 is the uh, drop in water table. And you multiply that by the thickness of the clay layer, which is 10 meters, and I get a value of 0.981 meters for its infinity. Here are the calculations for finding little t50. Remember this number, right? Time factor at 50% consolidation is 0.197. So using this equation, we can find a value for little t50. We have a value for c sub v, which is 5 times 10 to the minus 4 centimeters squared per second. And let's say uh, we calculate t15 seconds. And this is a doubly drained problem. We have a sand layer here, a sand layer here, right? And therefore, h to be used in this equation would be half the thickness of the clay layer, which is 5 meters. But you want to convert that into centimeters to be consistent with the units we are using for c sub v. So you multiply that by 100 and then square it, right? From this equation, t50 is calculated to be 1940.5 times 10 to the 4 seconds, and you convert that into years, and I get 0.62 years out of that.